Hey guys, Clint Walker here in South Texas. Listen, we've been out here several nights uh, hunting on this uh, awesome ranch owned by my buddy Leroy. And uh, because we were getting in real close on animals for good thermal footage and really challenging ourselves just to get closer, we decided to go ahead and set our zeros to 50 yards. Now, typically for me, I like the zero at 100. But this created a really interesting conversation that we had here at, at camp. And that is, well, if I'm zeroed at 50, what is my, what is my point of uh, impact doing now if I'm shooting at something that's say 25? So half that distance or twice that distance at 100. So we decided to set up a little range here and we're all zeroed at, at uh, 50 yards. I've got a 6.5 Grendel, a 5.56 and a six arc. And we wanted to see where those, those uh, impacts were now if we're holding that zero. Okay, so we're actually holding dire directly on the target just to give you an idea of the uh, point of impact, either plus or minus uh, north or south of that target. So I'm gonna show you those results right now and I think you'll find them pretty surprising. All right, so check it out. My 50 is zero, but now look at where these point of impacts are now for uh, Grendel, Arc, and 5.56. Five, now, here's the deal. We're shooting off of a tripod, so we might have a little bit of variation. And anyone that's, that's shot through a thermal, you'll know it's, it's uh, very difficult to be extremely precise even though the resolution is very good and of course our thermal targets really make it uh, a, a better uh, sight picture. But you can see how close these are and they're all a little low. I think our lowest is what, two inches? Yeah, about two and a half, yeah. Two and a half inches low at 25. Let's check out our 50 and make sure that we're zero there and then we'll move further down range. So the Grendel round, here's my, here's my zero. And then Darren, with his six arc and his five five six, these bullets are literally touching each other. Again, that's actually a testament not only that that uh, Darren can shoot and, and I can shoot, but also to the target itself. Uh, guys, if you're zeroing a thermal, you know how difficult it can be. You're using freaking hand warmers and spray paint and sunscreen, all this stuff, just to try to get a good thermal picture. We sell uh, at Armasite. We sell these thermal targets online. I believe you can get them at Optics Planet. I know uh, we have a vendor selling them on Amazon.com right now as well. So check that out and um, make sure you get yourself a thermal target because you can be this precise. But again, that's our 50 yard zero. Let's move. All right, guys. So now we're at our 100 uh, yard. So remember, we zeroed at 50. Check it out. My Grendel and my 556 five, are within about an inch of each other in, in height, right? In distance. And my arc is actually low, okay? So that one actually surprised me a little bit. Then Darren came back and shot a, another shot with his arc and hit right on the center line, right on the center line. Again, we're shooting off of a tripod, so we're, we're not completely stable, um, but that's a good indicator of what's going to happen. With most of your ammo, you're actually going to be a few inches high. How high is that from, from yeah, center? Go ahead. So let's see, we're three inches about three inches high to four inches high, depending on what round you're using, okay? Let's move to 150 and see what we got there. All right, guys, so now we're at this 150, and this is where things really start to get interesting. Check out the six arc. We actually had to print that twice because we were like, wow, look how much lower that is than my 6.5 Grendel and my 5.56. So my arc is way down here, so it looks like two two to two and a half inches uh, low of of zero so this is where he's holding remember and then when we look here i'm four inches to five inches high which tells me again that that 556 five, is riding an inch higher than the grendel at each target we pass so it's an, exactly an inch back there exactly an inch right here from the grendel but the arc is low Go figure. Let's look at the 200 and see what happens. All right, guys. So now we're at our 200 yard target. Now check this out. My Grendel right on the zero line. Okay. I may have pulled that shot. Maybe there was a, a cow or something that walked in the way, 
or maybe it's just this this damn Texas heat out here. I don't pull too many shots, and the guys here know that. That's why they're all just nodding their heads <laughs> in a, in approval. Uh, anyway, you got you got something in your throat. You're okay. So so yeah, there's a lot of this cow shit around here. I apologize. So anyways, we've got five five six right here, right above this. Guys, listen. Here's the deal. This target is really the size of your vitals on just about anything that you're shooting with a with a thermal outside of maybe a rabbit uh, or even a, a raccoon um, but this is a pretty good target area so we're still impacting the target with our 556 and our Grendel but look at my arc again my arc is still low and look at this we actually did two arc shots I'm not sure I think this was the first one here Darren yeah okay so now we're at four inches low with the arc there and five inches low versus an inch inch and a quarter higher than a zero on the 556 five, and of course right on the center line for the grendel so let's do this the next video we're going to zero at 100 and then we're going to work the same uh, thing with the arc the grendel and the uh, 556 five, Guys, I encourage you when you go home and you're zeroing your uh, your thermal or your night vision, go through the same process with your rifle. It's really important to know where you're hitting high or low so that you'll be able to adjust for those uh, longer or shorter shots in the field. All right, guys, so now that we've showed you the results from the from the range with the 6.5 Grendel, the 6 Arc, and the uh, 5.56, I mean, Darren, are, are you a little bit surprised? I'm, I'm actually very surprised as flat as this Arc shoots. Uh, I thought I would have similar results to what you had with the 556 and the Grendel. So I, yeah. I am actually shocked that it's lower. It's lower at long distance. But I guess mathematically, like you were saying, it's the six arc is flatter. So we're not dealing with this this, this big arc, this bigger arc that you have right. with with the 556 and the Grendel. Yeah. So, so th that's exactly what's happening. So you're seeing a more consistent result. So if you're a six arc shooter. We really know that that six arc is a great, you know, thousand yard round now in an AR-15 platform. But what it's also really good for, because it shoots so flat, is is thermal and night vision hunting. Yeah. What I would recommend for you is probably to zero at 100, and then we look at results at 50 and 25 and see if they're comparable. But this gets into part of that discussion, and that is. What is a distance for thermal hunting, right, from your yes. target? And anyone out there that's, that's done it knows that a lot of those engagements are very close. First of all, you know, we, we should always know what's, what's beyond our target or in front of our target, right? What's, what's behind it, right? And when you're running around a ranch or wherever at nighttime, you don't always know that answer. So you've really got to be cautious and pick your shots. You don't want to be lobbing out, you know, rounds that are going to be going 400, 500 yards. Most of those engagements, I mean, you've been doing this a long time, Darren. What, what are the most of the uh, targets that you're shooting at at nighttime with a thermal? Honestly, it's between 50 and 100 yards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, it comes down, a lot of this comes down to target identification. Right. Uh, if you're in tall grass and you see animals moving around, a deer with their head down, and their back's got a little bit of a bow in it, and yeah. you're, and you're, you know, everything looks closer on a thermal. Right. That's always the big, the big challenge is, is range, you know, ranging and, and target identification. So, I like to get closer, just so I know exactly. There's no mistaking, because on some of these ranches right here, uh, if you shoot the wrong deer, uh, <laughs> you're going to go into debt. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's, and you just want, and again, you, like you said, you want to be sure of your background. You want to be sure of your target. I like getting close so I can identify and it makes cool content yeah, being right, close. Right. So, but you know, for, for a rancher driving around and he sees something, he sees a coyote or something and he needs right. to pull out and take a shot. What we've just done here is very educational because he's going to know if he's, especially if he's on his thermal at night, he's going to crank up. He's going to see him at the tree line back there that we know is 200 yards. And he's right. like, ah, my 5.56 five, is pretty pretty dead nuts at 200 because I zeroed it at 50, and he's going to just crank down. Like that pig you shot last night yeah. running away from us it was about 200 yards, 200 yards, and you rolled him yeah. at 200. Like the shot Austin did on that coyote uh, two nights ago. Yeah. He was downtown, and I mean rolled him yeah. because he was at that 
he was at the intersection. The perfect spot. Yeah. I mean, and, that, yeah. and that's what we're seeing today. So, you know, just to clarify here, you know, uh, these animals, a lot of these critters, they, they look the same, especially when you're just scanning for uh, animals and all of a sudden you see a, a signature, a black hot, white hot, whatever you're set at in your color palette and you go, okay, what is that? And then everybody stops. And depending on what type of objective you have on there, you've got a 50 millimeter lens versus a 25 millimeter lens, it kind of gives you a, a different feel for that animal. And what might look like a, a, a tiny pig could actually turn out to be a, a big armadillo or a big raccoon for a second, depending on if the grass is there or whatever. So, and the guys that have been out there that, that know, that hunt, that they go, yep, yep. And the, and the guys at home that have never done this are like, man, I never mistake a, a armadillo for a pig, you know, and that's exactly what those ignorant fools sound like. So <laughs> at any rate, uh, that, that, this gives you a better indication, but the best thing to do, again, take your rifle, zero it where you're comfortable, and then decide where it's going to be. On this particular hunt, we knew that we were on foot, we're getting up close, as close as we can animal, so we, we pulled our zero in a little further than we typically do. Typically we zero at 100 yards. And I'm really glad that we did it because it really gave us an idea where these rifles are shooting. Guys, uh, listen, thanks for tuning in on this. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Share this with your friends. We'll have more tips and, uh, and videos coming up, just how-to instructional videos on to help you improve your thermal and night vision game. Darren Jones, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming out and, and getting on this with us. Darren's our brand manager at Armasite. Uh, you can send all negative comments directly to Darren Jones. Please. I'll put his cell phone number up in the description. He likes text better that way. Please, please send them late if yeah. possible, very late. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Armasite.com. Don't forget to check us out.